Okay guys, uh, we're gonna try to keep another another quick one here today. Um, but this is about how I set up the Fuji X-H2S for wildlife and a couple of gripes. Fuji, thanks for the follow the other day, love it. If you're listening to anything I say, please, please, in the next firmware update, please let us change ISO on the back dial. I don't understand why that's not currently possible. Um, double back button autofocus would also be super nice. Uh, you know, maybe the AEL button, maybe we can pop that to uh, like a single point autofocus. But I have a workaround for that that doesn't bother me. But in an ecosystem where you have aperture dials on almost all of your lenses, um, I don't understand why I have to keep aperture set on one of my dials. It just doesn't make sense. So for me as a wildlife photographer, I also almost never touch my aperture. Uh, I'm shooting the new XF 150 to 600 and my maximum aperture is already F8. So I'm not stopping it down. It's plenty sharp at F8 and I'm good with that. So uh, a couple of quick things I'm going to show you how I have this set up for autofocus right now. And I'm also going to show you um, a couple of options about how I change exposure on the fly. Uh, mainly shooting manual, but I found a couple of workarounds. So um, let's see here. We're going to flip over. I've got a screen recording going. Camera went to sleep. Okay, so there's gonna be two things I wanna show you here. We are gonna be using this button. We're losing focus, this button right at the back. And, sorry, YouTube to keep it landscape. This button right here. So these two buttons are the ones that we're gonna program. And I'll show you <coughs> how those work. So we're gonna hop into our menu system here. Okay, so we can see it. And you're gonna go to the wrench. Uh, first of all, let's go up to autofocus. So I'm usually in autofocus continuous, um, autofocus mode, you can change that. There's a few things you can do. I haven't really taken um, much of a dive in to look at sensitivity, but for now, I like the way it comes set up out of the box. So we're looking at how to change buttons. So you're gonna go down to the wrench, you're gonna go over, and you're gonna go to button dial settings. So there's two things. So the first thing I'll show you, go down to command dial. And when you go over, this is important. So we're gonna look at two modes today. We're gonna look at manual. And you see, this is the, the first problem, right? So in manual, I have shutter speed on my front command dial right here. And I have, if you can see it, I have f-stop aperture to my back command dial. But if I push the option, I can reverse those, but I can't change it. Oh, I change it. I can't add ISO is what I mean. Um, now, interestingly enough, when I used to shoot the Olympus, I also had to, the, the way the Fuji works is like a lot of cameras, you've got this ISO button and you have to, you push this and then you can use the dial to change it. But that's kind of annoying. You had to use two fingers, um, <clears throat> kind of work in harmony. So when I was shooting the Olympus, I was shooting auto ISO, which I do a lot. I trust auto ISO. You can put an upper limit if you want. And I was good with that. But the issue is the Olympus on my dial, I had exposure compensation. So I could set it to auto ISO, but if I thought maybe my highlights were blowing or whatever, I could just like hit my dial and dial it down and that would change where the ISO was gonna go as a result. Sorry, my dog's running around. I don't, I don't know what he's doing. Um, so that's not gonna work here as easily in manual. I will show you a workaround for that. But the first thing is I've tried uh, shooting in shutter priority and this is new to me. So same thing, you can flip it around, but if you flip it over into shutter priority and let's try to, there we go, the dog treats. Oh, sorry, push the wrong button. There we go. So we put it into shutter priority and now our front button is still changing shutter, but our rear button is changing exposure compensation. Now, I'm okay with this because I'm in auto ISO. I don't mind the upper limit at 12800. So I'm keeping it in auto ISO and the camera is automatically gonna default to try to shooting at, uh, to try to shoot at my lowest possible aperture. So that's okay because that's what I want. So I don't think this would work um, if you were trying to stop things down. Normally I'm not a big fan of letting the camera control two parameters. I think that's a big mistake. 
a lot of people make in priority modes. Auto ISO plus letting the camera change either your shutter or aperture can be kind of messy. But in this case, the camera's not changing my aperture at all because it's always going to try to default to give me as much light as possible. So it's always going to push me to my lowest aperture, which is by default what I want. So essentially I'm controlling shutter speed, which is the only thing that I really want control of for creative control uh, or the situation as it determines it. Uh, the camera's automatically giving me my lowest aperture and then it's automatically going to try to give me the lowest possible ISO based on the shutter. So I don't mind this because, hey, I'm looking at this and I want lower, you know, I want to change the exposure. This is a pretty good way to do it. Just monkey around with, with that there. Um, let's see if we can find a, a subject. If my dog wants to, to be there, then that's fine. This is another, another thing for another video. You know, it'd be nice maybe to be able to change between animal and bird a little bit faster. But real life, that I don't find that bugs me. I can usually get by with one or the other. Hey, Frank. Okay, here's my dog, Sam. There we go. What a nice guy. So you can see the animal autofocus is perfect. I mean, he's a big dog. He's close. It's almost too close. But it, it is finding him. There we go. So... Just twist my dial, no problem. And you can see, you can see the red aperture, it, like, it wants to change my aperture, but it can't, which is fine. And then when I meter, so here it's trying to shoot 12,800. If I drop my shutter by one stop, drops my ISO to 10,000. Now the reason it's not dropping my ISO by a whole stop is because I still don't have the light. So if I told it to go here, that's going to be worse. If I told it to underexpose by one stop, now you can see there's 6,400. And even if we look at the quality of that image, oh, it doesn't want to look back on the screen. That's okay. But anyway, I think the shutter priority is a really nice option for how you can do that. So the other way, if that doesn't work for you and you still want to shoot manual, and I'm still trying to make a decision on how to go between them. You can use this top button here and you can figure out exactly how you want to deal with exposure compensation here. So go back to your menu and this time we are going to go to function. Yeah, sorry. So you're going to go to function setting also in the wrench button dial management and then over to function setting. This is where you set all your buttons. <clears throat> so you scroll down. I'll get back to function one in a second here. And this is function two. So I have it set to exposure compensation when set to manual and it's an on off switch. So when I push the button, if you see the little, the little half circle above the shutter speed, see where it goes away, comes back goes away, comes back. So when it's there and I use that front dial, it's changing shutter speed. If I want, so let's say I'm shooting out in the wild and I know what shutter speed I want. I know I want to be at 250th or whatever. So I can just hit one button and now my back dial is going to exposure compensation and I'm still in manual. Now, one weird thing, this used to have this used to control my aperture with this back dial. So I might have changed a setting somewhere. Oh, there it is. So, okay, so there's a switch on the lens that allows me to change my aperture with the dial, or I guess it fixes it. So you see where that little, little pie plate is there? So when I turn it off, they both go away. So now that back dial is on exposure compensation, and when I push it, it's back. So either way, quick way, I mean, look, bam, 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 bam. I mean, that's a quick way to get access to exposure compensation if you want it. And I think it's nice to have, uh, I definitely like to have it there. Yes, I do, in a perfect world, Fuji, if you listen, you can make me delete this whole video and make it a moot point, is just allow me to keep shutter speed here and ISO here. I don't need aperture here. I can control it right here on almost all of your lenses. So in the meantime, 
I think this gives you two good options to get exposure compensation on a wheel. Um, if you, if you want to be able to shoot that exposure compensation just is telling the camera where you want it to expose. So if you're shooting auto ISO, it will then change the ISO based on the parameters you're telling it on what exposure you want. So I think that's a good way to do it. Last thing, try to keep this one short too. Go back to function setting and function one. So what do I have this for? For subject detection on or off. So if I push it, this button right here at the top, bam, bam. So you see in the bottom left-hand corner beside the M, we've got a little cat face, and now we go to uh, single point. So I have it set that when I push the up button on my D-pad, that's gonna let me change between my tracking modes. I like single point. So that's a quick, just a quick little way to change them. But I tap, 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 tap. So let's go back to Sam. We're in detection. Good boy. Uh, okay, we've got our. So I'm just bringing my exposure compensation up. What are we doing? There we go. Okay, there we go. See, it's still not a perfect system. I don't use it much, so I'm still trying to figure this out. But anyway, so this is about the autofocus. So you can see, hey, Sam. Sam, Sam, Sam. Sammy. Sam, look at me. Sam, what's this? Sam, good boy. Sam, there we go. Uh, uh, stay, stay, stay. Good boy. Don't get closer. So what if it was not finding him? I just tap that button. And now it's turned off, I go back to single point. So yeah, it'd be nice to have that on a back button focus, but bam, there it is, bam. Sorry, I hit the white balance button. There it is, turn it off, there it is. So again, I'm not saying this is perfect, as you can just see that white balance button is easy to hit, the ergonomics are not perfect at all. Um, but I think that's a two pretty quick ways to be able to get around not having double back button focus and being able to turn off subject detection really quick and get quick access to your exposure compensation. So there's some options, you know, they're not perfect, but a firmware update could fix these. And if they don't, we're still in good shape.